forward and a little note. The following documents comprise a series of autobiographical writings and dictations, third-person narratives, interviews, and other documentation regarding the life and adventures of SCP-1867, hereafter referred to as Mail, and by its preferred address, Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood, 8th Viscount of Westminster. Lord Blackwood asserts that he was born in the West Country of England in the early 19th century. He attests that his mother, Lady Charlotte Spencer Blackwood, hailed from a wealthy London family and that his father, Lord Richard Blackwood, was a hero of the French and Indian Wars and reputedly the slayer of the last living European greater dragon, Dragos Rex. He further attests that he has two brothers and a sister, respectively, Admiral Sir Stephen Blackwood, a hero of the Napoleonic Wars, who commanded Lord Nelson's fleet after his death, the Reverend Clifford Blackwood, a prominent member of the Church of England, who rose to the rank of Archbishop of York, and Lady Margaret Blackwood, who married into the royal family of Hanover and was an instrumental figure in the unification of Germany. Lord Blackwood attests that he attended Eden as a boy and subsequently Oxford. Following his graduation, he served for several years as an officer in the British Army. Following his discharge, he asserts, he spent several decades as a freelance explorer, archaeologist, naturalist, and writer, when not engaged in his duties as a conservative member of the House of Lords. During this time, he asserts that he engaged in a number of encounters with objects, creatures, and phenomena currently classified as SCP objects. He asserts that near the end of the 19th century, he served in the employ of Her Majesty's Foundation for the Study of Curiosities and Phantasmagoria prior to its becoming part of the modern foundation. He asserts that he retired in the early 20th century to the family estate in the West Country, where he remained prior to his acquisition by the foundation. Few of the events documented in these narratives have been corroborated by outside sources, and many of them contradict known historical facts, including an event Lord Blackwood insists occurred which ought to have been widely known to the general public had they occurred as stated. Several hypotheses have been proposed to explain these contradictions, including the possibility that Lord Blackwood's accounts are not accurate, the possibility that Lord Blackwood or someone associated with him as a high-level reality bender, or that a CK class event not known to the Foundation has occurred. Documents attributed to Lord Blackwood have been found in HMFSCP's archives, and several living SCP objects currently in containment have attested to the accuracy of the following narratives. None of the following is to be considered a factual recounting of history as it has occurred in the living experience of anyone reading it. Absent external cooperation, this collection has been compiled for the sole purpose of the ongoing study of SCP-1867 and any other SCP objects, known or unknown, which may be associated therewith. Note from Lord Blackwood. Don't mind him. I swear my honour as an Englishman that every word herein is true. Item number. SCP-1867 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1867 is to be kept in a 40 by 70 by 30 centimeter aquatic specimen tank. No additional security measures are necessary. SCP-1867's environment and care thereof are identical to that of non-anomalous members of the species. Recovered items relating to SCP-1867 are to be placed in Secure Storage Vault 16. Access to these items and to SCP-1867 itself is with permission of an appropriate Level 2 staff member. Beep 2012 
SCP-1867 has requested access to a selection of novels and nature journals. Request was denied. Description SCP-1867 is a neuter branch of the species Nimbrotha cubarana, variable neon slug. Measuring 11.7 centimeters in length, there are no physical differences between SCP-1867 and any other member of its species. SCP-1867 is sapient and capable of telepathic communication with individuals within 5 meters. It identifies itself as Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood, a British explorer and naturalist. No such individual appears in any municipal records. SCP-1867 speaks with terminology and style appropriate to late 19th century England and is generally friendly and cooperative with researchers. SCP-1867 makes repeated claims of past exploit and accomplishment, including service in the Second Opium War, expeditions to remote regions of the world, and encounters with various rare creatures and peoples. Despite the questionable validity of many of its claims, SCP-1867 has shown in-depth knowledge of geography, zoology, botany, archaeology, anthropology, and linguistics relating to its claimed regions of exploration, as well as more esoteric fields such as obscure mythology, mysticism, and cryptozoology. However, SCP-1867 does not seem to realize or willfully ignores any offense or information dating after approximately 1910. When requested to give proof of its exploits, SCP-1867 provided an address near Beep, England, claiming that it would be more than willing to donate its collection. Investigation of the address led to the cottage owned by one Miss Beep, who claimed to be keeping the house for Lord Blackwood. Further questioning failed to reveal any details of SCP-1867's nature or origins beyond what information SCP-1867 has already provided. Miss Beep died of heart failure five days after Foundation agents began investigations. Investigation of the cottage revealed an underground vault containing over 3,000 artifacts, zoological and botanical specimens, a library containing over 5,000 items, and a functioning, if outdated, laboratory. All materials within the collection were removed and relocated by the Foundation over the course of three weeks. Addendum 1, a full list of items recovered from SCP-1867's collection may be found in document 1867-VL. Items of particular note include 116 unknown species of plants, 107 unknown species of insects, 28 unknown species of lizards, 23 unknown species of fish, 14 unknown species of amphibians, 12 unknown species of mammals, fossils pertaining to 8 unknown species of dinosaur, fossils pertaining to 12 unknown species of prehistoric mammal, artifacts belonging to 29 unknown indigenous societies, 35 handwritten journals containing recordings of events described by SCP-1867, the accounts are generally identical, save some slight variations and exaggerations on the part of SCP-1867 in retelling, and have been dated to the appropriate time period of the events described. 20 kilograms of processed opium, collection of firearms of make and model not correlating with any known manufacturers, including three wide bore muskets marked as Dr. B.T. Moth's effective particle destabilizers. These items are non-functional. Detailed globes of Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Galilean moons, accompanied by notes detailing possible paths of surface exploration, a heavily modified carriage containing instruments of unknown purpose. A note attached to the door reads, On the Fritz, speak with Henry, in handwriting matching that of the journals. 
data expunged. Four agents were killed after activation before the object was destroyed. When questioned about the item, SCP-1867's response was, I did warn you to be careful about my collection. That bloody thing nearly took my head off back in walking in 97 when I found it. Addendum 2. The following interview is stated 845, Beep 2012. Good morning, SCP-67. Ah, good morning, Doctor. Wonderful to see you. Come in, come in, have yourself a seat. Now, if I remember correctly, the last time you were here, I was telling you about the time I was captured by the Ubala tribe of the Congo. Actually, I have some questions about your story. You see, no such tribe exists. Of course not. There weren't any of the Ubala left after the village was destroyed by Mokele Mbebe. I still regret not being able to bag that monster when I had the chance. It is a persistently elusive creature. 1867. We have no actual proof that what you are saying is not just an elaborate fiction. The artifacts and records we found in your vault could easily be fakes. Nonsense! I would never fabricate any of my work. Why? It's against the very heart of being a naturalist. While I am repeatedly amazed by your institution here, you seem to be missing the explorer's spirit. When I scaled the Himalayas in search of the monks of the Golden Mountain, did I worry about what others had said about them? Of course not. I went and found out for myself. You do realize that you're a sea slug, right? Good heavens, boy! Have you been drinking? That's utterly ridiculous! If you can't be bothered to be sensible, I have no reason to speak with you. Go get yourself a nice cup of tea and sober up. 